Last car, coast to coast, presented by Hercules Tire. 60 minutes of local, regional, and touring series interviews, news, and opinion. Now, here are a couple of guys who are still waiting to be knighted by the Queen of England so they can be Sir Kyle and Sir Buddy. Here are our very own jesters of the track, Kyle Ricky and Buddy Law. The defending champ is back in victory lane in the West, while the NASCAR Pinty Series opens up with a late race pass for the win, and Ronnie Bassett Jr. will join us to discuss an emotional week for both he and his family. Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast for Wednesday, May 25th, 2016. Sir Kyle, joined by Sir Buddy. I get called Sir a lot, but it's not because I, I'm <laughs> knighted. It's just because I'm an old man. That's all. Have a good weekend? I did. You know, actually, I... A wet weekend here in the Carolinas. One more weekend really will make six consecutive weekends that I technically have been off. Mm -hmm. I have never had that many weekends off, and I'm going crazy. I'm w going stir crazy. Were you able... I know you, your place of employment is within shouting distance of Charlotte Motor Speedway, where all the festivities were this weekend. Able to get out there at all? I didn't. I actually just uh, kind of, but but it's fun because where we are, as you know, where we're at, it's 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 right in the midst of the racetrack and the camping facility, mm -hmm. Moorhead Campground. So there's so much energy going on. That's what's just as fun. I mean, it almost makes the race anticlimactic. I told this to somebody last night. Uh, it's just so much fun to see all the people starting to come in. The tailgating that's going on. I'm leaving the office at five o'clock on a Tuesday. And there's people sitting out there, campers, drinking beer, playing cornhole. It's like, you lucky dog. Mm -hmm. And it's just so fun to see the buildup of both the All-Star Weekend and the Coke Stick Center Weekend. Fun time here in Charlotte, no doubt. You're in the middle of it, but won't be this weekend. I'm very jealous. You'll be at the NASCAR <laughs> K&N Series East Race on Monday at Dominion Speedway up in uh, Virginia. Yeah, they are uh, actually going to head up Friday to uh, to do a little scouting again because they, obviously it's a multi-purpose facility. Mm -hmm. And in addition to the oval track that the uh, the K&N drivers will be participating on, there's a road course that uh, we as WK are going to be running at in late July, so that's still under construction. There's some areas that are still being worked on. And, you know, you talk about the weather, and I know you guys got hammered with it on and off so much over the weekend. Uh, I would say ever since Mother's Day weekend, somebody told me last night up in that region it was like 18 straight days of some type of rain. Maybe not torrential rain, but drizzle, rain here and there. And it's been really tough for those guys up there to continue with the rest of their project at Dominion. Uh, but they have some dry weather, I think, coming, and uh, it sounds like they're going to have a really fun weekend. Going to be ready to go for this Monday. I believe there's an open test session this weekend as yep. well for the K&N teams leading into the race weekend and, and that weather that you mentioned, uh, I think, contributed to 14 rainouts again <laughs> yes. this weekend at NASCAR Wheel and All-American Series tracks across the country. It's going to be a busy show here on NASCAR Coast to Coast this afternoon. We're going to talk with Chris Eggleston, last year's NASCAR K&N Pro Series West champion. Took him four races to get back to victory lane, but got back there this past weekend. Yeah, you know, much like Ryan Partridge, who we had on a couple of weeks ago, he's kind of in the same boat. He's been right there in the thick of the battle. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not having as good of runs as Ryan has, but right behind him. And it's a very tight points battle uh, between Todd, Ryan, and Chris. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good battle. Noah Gregson's right in there as well. Grayson Raz. Uh, some other names that I know we're going to see in victory lane at some point this season. But the good thing is Chris is also heading back to his stomping grounds, which is Colorado National Speedway. So he's got some good momentum on his side. That's where we discovered Chris yeah. four or five years ago. We, when we discovered him. Yes, we did. That's right. We did. Uh, and, in fact, he picked up his very first K&N win there a couple of years ago. That's where the series goes next. He'll be with us to chat about that here coming up in a little bit, the NASCAR Pinty's series, and it's going to take a while to get used to it. Uh, but uh, formerly the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series up in Canada, now the NASCAR Pinty's series. Got back on track this past weekend, and another great finish, green-white checkered uh, at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. And it was a familiar face in Victory Lane. Andy Ranger, wasn't it? <laughs> or is it Andrew Ranger? Andrew Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and what a great finish because obviously rain played a factor in the finale, the outcome of the event. And uh, listening to uh, some of the post-race comments that he made with regards to what saw he saw happen unfold in front of him with the drivers that were in front of him at the time was pretty cool. And uh, coming away with another victory. But um, while things were going on here at Charlotte and it was a little rainy, I was kind of keeping up with uh, – Things going on there, not just with the Pinty Series, but sound like it was a good weekend for the other forms of motorsports, namely the Pirelli World Challenge. Yep. I mean, it sounded like Ron Fellows had a fantastic opening weekend. One of my favorite weekends yep. of the year. And we can go there with the NASCAR Pinty Series and the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series each September, and we'll be there again here in a couple of months from now. Andrew Ranger will be with us to talk about this past weekend, though, and the 
wet finish of that event on uh, Sun was it Sunday Saturday Sunday, yeah, Sunday was afternoon Sunday. I thought it was a uh, Sunday afternoon race. Also be joined by uh, Ronnie Bassett Jr., uh, a driver and a family that has been through so much. Saturday night, I believe it was, losing their uh, shop due to a fire. Yeah, I mean, just a, a, a very rough story to hear. Fortunately, number one, uh, nobody was hurt. Right. Uh, it sounded like Dad had just finished uh, washing the tractor as part of their hauler deal. New rain was coming and backed it in uh, and parked that in there, and uh, they thought it maybe was something, I don't know whether it was with the tractor, um, you know, electrical or something that just uh, shorted or something that created that fire, but... Uh, the good news was, I guess the boys had just finished up their work. They were done. Uh, Ronnie wasn't even there, and uh, it sounded like he had to kind of see it off of his phone, right. uh, FaceTime, which can be just as horrific. But uh, it's a bittersweet story, and I know they have a long road to recovery, but uh, our NASCAR family has, has pretty much stepped in to help them out, and that's what's fantastic about this. Both of them will be on the racetrack this weekend at Dominion Raceway, and we will talk with Ronnie Bassett coming up. In a little bit, uh, so hopefully, uh, like you mentioned, a long recovery. Hopefully that recovery will come along fairly quick. I know initially it's going to seem like it's going to be forever by the time yeah. you can recover. But uh, once all the insurance stuff is done and everything gets rolling, hopefully they can uh, recover here pretty quick. Yeah, and it never comes at an opportune time. You no. never want to see any of this happen. Uh, and when, when you're watching the news and you're seeing just the horrific weather out of the Midwest, it's just devastating people with so many tornadoes. Whether it's that, whether it's a fire, you never want to see that happen to anybody. And, you know, it just makes what he was doing so insignificant when you look at the bigger picture. But what a great year he was having. We've talked about the parody on the k Pro Series East. There has not been a repeat winner. Ronnie's right there in third. He has tucked himself into a very good mm -hmm. position, 20 points out, uh, in prime position to battle for this championship. And then this comes along. I mean, I know that's insignificant compared to what they lost. And like he said, 20 years of equipment, tools, right. memories that are in that garage. I mean, stories that only are, are salvaged in their memories right now. Um, and our, our thoughts and prayers are with them and just so glad that nobody was, was in the garage and nobody was hurt. Absolutely. Well said. NASCAR next last week. Uh, we've gone to a luncheon, uh, which is why this show was uh, taped last mm -hmm. week in an audio form at GoPro. What do you think of the class? A uh, pretty, pretty good and a very young class as they <laughs> seem to get younger and younger every year. It is, and and my hats off to NASCAR because this was the first year, and you and I talked about it. And we thought it was pretty cool that they included uh, the NASCAR Pinty series or a driver from there, right. and also the NASCAR Will and Euro series in um, Alan Day and also in Gary Clute. Yep. Uh, very good class. I mean, very good class. And you know, yesterday, just for the heck of it, I saved the sheet of the drivers that were in last year's class. And, I mean, when you look at the accomplishments of the vast majority of them, mm -hmm. I mean, you have a story that you can tell. I mean, great accomplishments already for a lot of them moving up into the Camping World Truck Series, what they're continuing to do in the Canon Pro Series East or West, or what they're doing in late model competition. Every one of them is doing a fantastic job, and I think NASCAR has done a great job in their selection process. Yeah, you just look at the last two or three years of that series, and, and like you, I have the posters in, in my office and you look at the William Byrons and the mm -hmm. John Hunter Nemechek's and the Rico Abreu's all moving up the ladder, you yeah. know. And and it was it wasn't just four or five years ago that they were in in Rico's case sprint cars, and he's still racing sprint cars. But most of them just jumping up out of the legends cars into pro late models and super late models. And now we're talking about him every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> and I assume it'll be the same with this new class with the Todd Gillilands and the Harrison Burtons and the Julia Landauers and Noah Gregson's a uh, really good class. Colin Cabry. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Julia Landauer, she's the next up-and-coming female driver that's done very well. Top five run over the weekend here at, uh, at Orange Show Speedway. So she is making tremendous strides and taking advantage of her opportunities. But uh, Todd Gilliland speaks for himself. Uh, Matt Tift, you know, doing a great job uh, for it, Joe yeah. Gibbs Racing in the mm -hmm. Xfinity and the Camping World Truck Series. Uh, you know, he didn't have a great run, I believe, in the truck race Friday night. I think it was fuel mileage uh, that, that worked to his benefit, I right. believe, in the truck race. And he ended up with a top five, uh, whereas he really wasn't that competitive uh, during the course of the race. It was such a great uh, field of trucks out there, but so many good, good drivers to keep your eye on. It's just, it's endless. And three of the top five in the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series West race this past weekend, NASCAR next drivers. But behind Chris Eggleston and Grayson Raz, who finished first and second, Noah Gregson was third, Todd Gilliland was fourth, and Julia Landauer rounded out the top five, Ryan Partridge, Ron Norman. Uh, rounded out the top seven. You see the rest of the top ten there. The NASCAR Kane and Pro Series West back on track in a couple of weeks 
at Colorado National Speedway uh, on June 11th for their next event. When we come back, we're going to talk to the race winner of that event. Chris Eggleston joins us, picked up the race win in the Sunrise Ford 150 on Saturday night in his Napa Filters Toyota. He'll join us after the break. NASCAR Coast to Coast will be right back on MRN.com. Restore lost fuel economy and eliminate rough idle with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, buy two bottles of Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner and get one free. Clean clogged injectors and increase fuel efficiency with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ready to take the training wheels off your race scanner? Go to fanvision.com and upgrade your experience with FanVision. Not only will you be able to hear the race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets a good run, drafting help from Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. Jr. again pulls up alongside for the race lead. We'll see every moment through live video, instant replays, live stats, and more. Hi, I'm Jamie McMurray, driver of the number one McDonald's Chevrolet. And I never go to the track without my FanVision. So go to fanvision.com to rent or buy yours today. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job, our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. This is NASCAR k and Pro Series East driver Colin Cabry, and you're listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast on MRN.com. Now back to Kyle and Buddy. All right, thanks very much, Colin. One of the NASCAR Next drivers announced last week driving for Rev Racing this season in the NASCAR k and Pro Series East. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. Shifting coasts now, I guess you could say, from the east to the west, and Chris Eggleston picking up the race win, his first of the season this past week in a uh, – where were they? The new racetrack. Right? Orange Show. Orange Show Speedway. <laughs> Chris, welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. First time since we've been able to talk to you since last December and uh, finally getting the victory lane at Orange Show Speedway. Congratulations. <clears throat> thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks for having me on your program. What a, what a cool place to go back to. Uh, I, I personally have never been to Orange Show Speedway, but, man, what a, what a cool and great facility that is, you know, being an old football stadium. Uh, you know, kind of like the old Bowman Gray of the West Coast everybody's talking about. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, man, I tell you what, that place is tight. And it's a lot smaller once you get, you know, 20K and in cars or so on that racetrack in, in a full field. And, uh, man, what a great event and had a blast out there. Seems like this year has been a tale. In the first four races, a tale of two halves. I mean, the first two, obviously, Todd Gilliland was off to a, uh, a great start with his success as one of your teammates, but as of recently, and I mean, you and Ryan Partridge have been right there in the wings with very consistent runs, keeping this points battle very tight. Uh, what was the difference over the weekend here at Orange Show, or is, is that a track that's even comparable to the old Colorado National Speedway that you came from? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think it can be a, a, a tale of many things. Uh, when we got there Friday, we didn't unload with a lot of speed, and and all the guys over at BMR, they, they dug deep for sure and, and worked really hard, and we definitely found some speed throughout throughout testing and practice. And and those types of racetracks, I don't know, just seem to suit my racing style a little bit more. Um, you know, the nine of Ryan Partridge, he, he definitely had a fast car uh, sitting on the pole, and, and we were able to apply pressure to him throughout the entire race. And just kind of biding our time, I mean, we were on his bumper for a whole 130 to 40 laps until that incident happened. And and just didn't want to – we kind of wanted to time it out just right. Um, didn't want to give him the bumper too early just to make sure he didn't – he couldn't return the favor late in the race. And just unfortunate circumstances for him and his team, that, that's terrible. Never the way you want to go out uh, on a race like that. But um, we had, I think, a, a little bit better car than Ryan and um, had, had a good car to hold off the JPR boys on that le- last restart. And those JPR boys finishing second in third in Grayson Raz and Noah Grayson. What is your thought process through the first couple of events this season? You're the defending champ wanting to uh, go for another title this season, having to chase your new teammate Todd Gilliland, who up until a couple weeks ago uh, nobody could beat him uh, on the East Coast or the West Coast. Uh, I mean, what, what are you, your process, your thought process through that, 
um, as your teammate, but also, you know, this new young kid coming in and trying to take the championship from you? I, I think my thoughts were similar along the lines with everybody else. You know, he came into Phoenix late last year and won that Phoenix race, and and people were skeptical, knew Todd had a lot of talent, but didn't know if it was a fluke or whatnot. And then he comes out and wins the first three races, you know, in the West and the East at Kern, Irwindale, New Smyrna. Um, I think everybody understood and realized at that point, you know, this kid's the real deal. Todd, Todd's got a lot of talent. He's a very humble young man and young indeed, uh, still 15 years old. Um, he's got a bright future ahead of him and really proud to be his teammate over at Bill McAnally Racing. And hats off to, to all those guys over on the Napa Auto Parts number 16 team. I mean, they've done their homework in the off season, and, and they've definitely prepared fast race cars. And uh, I feel like uh, myself with our uh, 50th anniversary Napa Filters Toyota team, we've done a good job keeping pace with them. We've just been, been short, you know, those first two or three races. We went to Tucson a couple weeks ago, and I thought we had the fastest car and thought we were just saving our tires, and the cautions just didn't fall our way. And so – um, I think uh, a lot of strategy and luck didn't go our way in, in Tucson and had a fast race car to contend for the win. But finally things fell into our lap and everything went just right at Warren Show Speedway and we picked up our fourth win and first of this year. You guys are going to new tracks, Orange Show being one of them. New to the tour this year, Douglas County Speedway comes up a little bit later on this season. A return back to Utah Motorsports Campus. Uh, when you look at the schedule and you know you have some new events on there, and I know your crew – uh, the, the people that are part of your team are a big part of this as well. But when you look at yourself and Ryan as someone of the elder statesman now, when you're looking at a very young crop of drivers and you guys are young yourselves, do you feel like that's where you have the added advantage because you guys have a little bit more experience, a little bit more knowledge, uh, a little bit more of a notebook to go back off of uh, at some of the repeat tracks that you go to, but also when you go to a track like uh, an orange show uh, that may be similar to a track that you ran in the past? Yeah, I mean, I would like to think so. It's so tough to tell. Um, it seemed like last year all the new tracks that we went to, we had the most luck at uh, for whatever reason that may be. And then, um, you know, like a place when you go to Orange Show, it takes so much patience and so much give and take early in the race. If you're restarting on the outside or you got somebody tucked up on your hip and you're on the inside, I, I think sometimes um, if you're new into the series or maybe a little younger, you may pr press the issue a little sooner and a little harder. And maybe like guys like Ryan and I, we, we know that it's a long race. We try to conserve as much tire as we can and um, try to make those uh, moves that we know that are going to pay dividends in the end and not try to put ourselves in a position that may compromise a, a good and decent finish if we didn't have a car to win. So I think all of that kind of plays into the factor. Um, when we go to a couple of those road courses, like you mentioned, Sonoma and a doubleheader at Utah Motorsports Plex, I think those are going to be kind of the deciding weekends and deciding factors. A lot of a lot of the drivers in the Canaan West and East that decide to come over, you know, I don't think they all have a ton of road course background. And a lot of that patience will wear thin sometimes when you go to a road course and you're following somebody for a couple laps and, and you're str struggling to get drive off on certain critical passing points and corners. And so I think, uh, I think those are going to be true testaments on, on the championship standings and uh, just looking forward to the rest of the schedule. I mean, we're going to some cool places. Uh, you know, definitely looking forward to going back to Iowa. That's one of my favorites along with everybody. It seems like we have the worst finishes there, but it's definitely one of my favorite racetracks. And hopefully we can turn our luck around when we go back there as well. Buddy mentioned Utah coming back up on the schedule here. You mentioned in a moment ago a double header racing there in a couple of months in September. Go to Sonoma in June. What is your comfort level on the road courses turning both right and left? So, me and Kyle, I, I don't have a ton of road course background, that's for sure. I mean, Sonoma last year was my first road course race in a stock car, and, you know, I've gotten in a, a one or two cars and kind of tuned some laps a little bit. But other than that, my road course background is, is so minimal. Um, I think the highlight of my whole road course background is just, you know, going to the banquet last year and racing nose to tail with William Byron. I mean, that, that's about it. So, uh, myself along with others, uh, we don't have a, a good history of it. Uh, we try to pick it up as quick as we can. Uh, while we're there with a limited practice that we have. And kind of going back to the younger generation coming up, you know, being 15, 16-year-olds, the Todd Gillens, the Riley Herbs, those guys. You know, sometimes, I, I mean, I don't feel like an old veteran by no means, but, you know, being 27 years old now, it's definitely a lot older than most of my competition. And sometimes you get guys like Todd and Riley and other younger generations like that that are really young. Sometimes, you know, they can pick up on certain things maybe a little quicker um, per se, but – 
I don't know. I, I feel really optimistic going into Sonoma. Um, I had a blast out there. I think I learned a lot, and I took a lot from it, and I can't wait to apply everything I learned into this year's road course event. You've, you've hit on some key things with regards to the youngsters, and we've talked about the great maturation process of, of this talent pool that we see the last two or three years. Uh, you know, the, the level of competition, the level of focus, concentration uh, that they have is absolutely phenomenal. I know here in Mooresville and in Concord and the Charlotte area, uh, with a lot of the k and Pro Series East teams, a lot of the drivers are here. Um, or they're close to each other. They can see each other geographically. Out of the West, you might be scattered a little bit more. In your case, have you had a chance, or do you have a chance, to spend time with Riley, Todd, and Julia in the race shop, or is it more at racetracks based off of where you guys may be located? Yeah, it's tough for all of us to get to the race shop all at the same time. I mean, with Todd in North Carolina, myself in Colorado, Riley in Las Vegas, and Julia, <laughs> uh, you know, splitting her time between New York and Charlotte, we're, we're definitely scattered all across the map. So it's hard to get all to get together when it's not a race weekend. But when it comes race weekend, it seems like we've built a real cohesive relationship as teammates. I think we all communicate and work well as we're practicing and testing. We share a lot of information on stuff that we're trying on the racetrack, what helped, what didn't help, uh, which I think pays a lot of dividends going into some of these new racetracks we've never been to, such as this past weekend on Orange Show, when we can kind of all sit down and and kind of debrief and and go over things that worked and didn't work. So I think that's that's, that's helpful. Um, And then at the same time, you know, you've got Todd and Riley, 15 and 16 years old, uh, the amount of energy, the energy level that they bring on a race weekend, I mean, it wears me out just watching them. I mean, they have so much energy, and uh, I, I just don't remember having that much energy when I was, you know, 15 or 16 years old. But, man, the, the amount of focus that they carry throughout the whole race weekend, you know, they, they both have a lot of talent. And I know you guys were talking about Julia earlier on your show. You know, she doesn't have much of an oval track background, but she's definitely turned a lot of heads early this season and, and look for a lot of promising things from her as well. She was killing it on the go-kart track last week. The NASCAR <laughs> yeah, I next bet to she them. was. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah. she, she was hauling. Well, you remember um, when uh, we were talking to her at the, the luncheon when we were leaving, we yeah. said goodbye, and she was talking about being on the cart. She goes, I miss it so yeah. much. And that's what she uh, said yeah. uh, a couple of times last week for Julia Landauer. Fifth in points. You are uh, up to third in the championship standings, nine points out, four races in. Is it too early to – to narrow the field down yet to say, all right, these four, these five drivers probably going to contend for the title. Yeah, I hate I hate worrying about points, <laughs> and and I've been really good this year about not keeping track of the standings. You know, we, in all honesty, I know this is cliche for any driver, but it really is true to us. Based on coming back as a defending champion, we just want to go out, we want to win races, and we want to put up good finishes. And then at the end of the year, with a couple races left, you know, we'll we'll take a look at the points and evaluate evaluate what's going on. Uh, but until then, you know, we're gonna we're not gonna do anything to jeopardize a good finish. We just want to go out there with with a lot of focus on on winning races. Um, you know, you mentioned Todd Gillen has been kind of the class of the field earlier in the year, and Ryan and myself, uh, both with one wins apiece. We just want to continue to build on that with our Napa Filters Toyota and, and go out there and get some more wins. Yeah, but as much as you wanted to take that bullseye off your back, changing the number wasn't gonna do it. They still know your number. You, they still know who you are. Uh, of course, everybody knows you were the 99 last year, and you're uh, the number 50 this year for a very good reason. I'm sure that's uh, that's been a fun part of uh, the early part of the year this year, too. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I definitely – I would be lying if I didn't say I missed my 99 number. That was a, it was a cool number to have. I've never had that number, and it brought a lot of success, not only for myself, but other drivers in the BMR stable, Patrick Starpoli, uh, Nick Drake won with it in Phoenix. It just had a lot of good luck in going out and winning the championship with it was really cool but on top of that it's really cool what we can do with napa filters celebrating 50 years as a, a napa filters branded a napa branded product uh bringing the car number 50 over to kind of help promote and and share that uh, it's been really cool to share that with the fans and, and everybody going to the racetrack week in and week out and uh, we'll try to do the same again this this year and, and put the 50 napa filters in the victory lane a few more times and hopefully stand at the top of the podium at the banquet and this has to uh, give you a lot of confidence a lot of positive momentum now heading back to your home track. Next stop for the NASCAR k and Pro Series West Colorado National in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm excited. Really, really excited. Uh, the fans in Colorado are always so awesome. They pack the place. Uh, it's just a really fun environment to race in, regardless of it being my home track or not. Uh, last year, Ryan was had a tremendous amount of speed. Ryan Partridge in the nine. 
Um, so we definitely look to, to change the outcome of that, of what he had last year and, and return to our winning, winning roots like we did in 2014. Uh, you know the normal guys are going to be fast, uh, Riley, Noah, Grayson, um, and Julia and uh, Cole Rouse. You know, just the Canaan West has got so much great talent. Um, but hopefully we can buckle down, get a well-balanced race car. Uh, the thing with Colorado, the weather is always changing, as everybody knows, and it seems like the ground is always shifting. And so for as bumpy as it was in the years past, it seems like it's gotten even more bumpy, added certain characteristics. So it's all things we'll have to overcome, and uh, hopefully we come out on top. Keep the drivers on their toes. Yeah, Mother absolutely. Nature helping out there at Colorado National Speedway, June 11th, the next stop, the NASCAR Cane and Pro Series West. Chris, again, thanks for joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Congratulations on the win, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your program. All right. That is Chris Eggleston, 2015 Series champion, getting it done on the West Coast. Is there a momentum shift here? Uh, we're, <laughs> we haven't really seen uh, yeah. Todd toward the front here. Well, I guess he was second a couple weeks ago at Tucson. But, you know, that all those victories have kind of – Woed up just a bit. Well, McAnally's been in victory lane. Brancati's been in victory lane. Mm-hmm. Jefferson Pitts is coming. So yeah, uh, you got to believe Noah Gregson and Grayson Raz are going to have something to say about it. Cole Rouse, Riley Herbst, two youngsters still getting their uh, the wheels underneath the car for them and, and getting their feet wet. It's going to be a good run for this championship again. But you know, Eggleston and Partridge, they're your veterans this year. Uh, they'll be they'll be ones to watch out for. Eggleston, twenty seven years old, about time to retire. Isn't <laughs> <it? Yeah. laughs> Coming up, they're going to go to the NASCAR Pinty Series up in Canada. Andrew Ranger, the big winner this past weekend at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, will join us after the break. Coming back with more of NASCAR Coast to Coast, it's Kyle Rickey and Buddy Long right after this. Race on over to mrn.creekstonefarms.com now through June 8th and enter our sizzling steak sweepstakes where you can win a gift certificate good for $500 in Creekstone Farms premium black Angus beef and all natural Duroc pork. No purchase necessary, open to legal residents of the 50 United States and District of Columbia who are 21 or older at time of entry. If you want America's best black Angus beef ribeyes, fillets, all natural pork tenderloins, baby back ribs and more, you've got the green light. Go to mrn.creekstonefarms.com and enter today. What do you love most about July 4th weekend? Is it the food, the family, the fireworks? Well, this July 4th weekend, add one more word to the list. First, as in the first Coke Zero 400 at the world's first motorsports stadium. Everything you love about the holiday gets a huge upgrade at the all-new Daytona. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Coke Zero 400, powered by Coca-Cola, Saturday night, July 2nd. Guarantee your seats at 1-800-PIT-SHOP or DaytonaInternationalSpeedway.com. Leading the race in innovation, Freightliner Trucks designed the Cascadia Evolution to lower your real cost of ownership. When powered by the integrated Detroit powertrain with a DT12 automated manual transmission and intelligent powertrain management, the Cascadia Evolution can achieve up to a 13% fuel efficiency increase over the first generation EPA 2010 compliant Cascadia model, keeping you on the road and in the race longer. Learn more about the Cascadia Evolution at FreightlinerTrucks.com. Freightliner Trucks, run smart. This is NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour driver Ron Silk, and you're listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast on MRN.com. Now back to Kyle and Buddy. Halfway home on this Wednesday afternoon, welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. Joined now by the winner of this past weekend at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, the first ever NASCAR Pinties race. First time we can call it that, Andrew Ranger. Andrew, welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. Congratulations on the win. I understand a wild last two laps to conclude the event uh, this past Sunday. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, I'm uh, very happy to win the first race, first Pentis uh, race. So uh, it was a crazy weekend, a lot of fun, new team, a new crew chief, uh, everything new for me, new cars. So it was uh, very stressful, but uh, at the end, to win an, uh, a really nice win like that it was fantastic for us. Yeah, I liked one of the comments that you made. It's always cool. It's always sweet when you know you have a car that's good enough to win. And always sweet when you had a car that you thought, well, maybe it's a second, third, or fourth place car, and you still end up winning anyway. Take us through those final couple laps uh, once you guys got the green again. Oh, yeah. it's uh, My car was a little bit tight, you know, at the end. And uh, I could push really hard. And there at Mossport, it's a lot of heels. So... I was not uh, I was not able to carry enough speed there, so I said, look, maybe we have a second or third car finish, but uh, 
I will try something to the end. And uh, I saw Labby and Hathaway pushing really, really hard. And uh, when a caution came out with three to go, I say, oh, my God, it's <laughs> got to be uh, interesting at the end. And uh, it's what happened. Those guys touched a little bit. The ring came out at uh, some corners. So uh, I was able to take the inside of Labby and Hathaway and win the win that race. So crazy finish. Held off Robin Buck, DJ Kennington, Caden Lapsovich, and Alex Labby, the rest of the <clears> top five. On Sunday afternoon, you mentioned uh, a lot of new for you this year. Uh, a couple of things stay the same. Mopar Pennzoil, still your sponsor. The number 27 has always been with you and remains with you. Yep. Tell us about the team change, though. Uh, obviously, a new team owner and, and apparently everything else fairly new for 2016 for you. Exactly. Uh, I've been with uh, Mopar and Dutch for the last uh, five years. So they, they are amazing uh, sponsors, amazing crew. It's just that... Uh, the team, you know, scrubble scrubble a little bit last year. We uh, during the winter, the, uh, we need to work a lot to change some uh, some guys, and uh, we finally end up with a new crew chief, new race team. Uh, same owner though, it's uh, DJ Kennington Racing. Uh, so to me, to come there and that event, it was a little bit stressful, but uh, we get out of there with uh, a nice win. So I'm very happy. It started really well the season. I think. Uh, uh, you know it worked you know so I'm very happy every change we make it worked too so uh, I was definitely happy to win that that race always a great start when you you go to Canadian Tire Motorsport Park it always just has such great momentum uh, and energy and I know all of your races really pretty much do but uh, the fan turnout is always phenomenal there's other touring series that are there that weekend and obviously when we go there in September we always look forward to it one of the things I always like to see is uh, new faces at the beginning of a new season and how strong a series is and what it appears all indications are and Kyle just mentioned a couple of the names in the top five Robin Buck really wasn't on the uh, the tour a year ago Caden Lapsovich ran around half or just a little over half the races last season but when you look at the the rundown about a third of the field are rookies there's a lot of names in there that didn't run on a full-time basis last year or maybe one or two it looks like a very strong program back in 2016. Exactly. It's true what you say. It's uh, new guys, you know, they push really hard. And that series is very strong. Like this weekend, just race fun. There are more than 20,000 of people right there wow. to watch our race. So it's uh, it's great. We go in Toronto downtown. We go at uh, Three Rivers where it's 100,000 of people right there. So we go to big heaven and it's, uh, it's good for our sponsors, good for the series and you know, the kids are pushing really hard. I'm just 30 years old, but I can see that the, some guys are coming. So I need to push hard, but uh, we have a good team. Uh, I'm not uh, worried about it, and uh, we just need to work really hard. And uh, I think we have a pretty good chance, you know, this year to finish always on the top three and top five. So uh, our goal is to win the championship, and uh, we'll try everything really hard. 27 cars took <clears throat> the green flag, a very healthy field this past Sunday in Canada um, at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. Talk about the, the, the closing laps of the event. Uh, you mentioned under yellow, you noticed it starting to rain on the backside of the course. How hairy was it going in to that, uh, that section on the first green flag lap after, uh, after you noticed the rain starting to come down? Exactly. Uh, it's my crew chief told me, look, uh, they are, we are going green. And I say, man, it's got to be crazy because I look the weather at the, it's really a long track. Huh? So half of the track was dry and half of the track was wet. So NASCAR didn't know that, you know. So when they put the, the green flag, everybody was like split, uh, uh, sliding everywhere, actually. And right in the corner of the two. And Labby and Hathaway came really wild in the corner. And I took to the inside there, but really on the back straightaway, uh, the vis uh, visibility was very, very bad. And actually, I hit like a part of uh, a bumper, I think, on the straightaway. So uh, I could see really well. And uh, to finish and win that race, you know, almost side by side with uh, uh, with the one car was pretty cool, you know. So uh, I am very happy. And uh, it's great to see that great event, uh, great sponsor, too. So more than happy to win. Well, and of course, we uh, we had the chance to get together with the Pinty's people back in December uh, during the awards banquet here in uh, the Charlotte yep. area. And that was so phenomenal to to see them be a part of it and that Pinty's is going to be around for a long period of time. The schedule pretty much is about the same. A lot of very good racetracks, a good mix of road courses 
and ovals. And one of the big announcements that was made, and you touched on it a few moments ago, you are going to be in Toronto this year, but it's part in July uh, of a deal with the, the Verizon IndyCar Series. They'll also be up there at that time as well. It says a lot to me about the, the health and the, the strength of that program when you can, you can tie yourself into another program such as the IndyCar program, kind of reminding me of the days of Montreal uh, when we used to go there and you guys were tied in with the Xfinity Series. And uh, I just didn't know what that meant to you to know that you're, you know, not only in the spotlight whenever, wherever you go, but now tied to the IndyCar Series when you go up into Toronto as well. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's good. Those events are live TV, uh, same of uh, – and three rivers, and like I said, that we are the feel is good. It's almost like 30 car on the track. Sometimes it's a little bit more than that. So live TV, big event, more than 20,000 people last weekend, and like you say, Toronto, it's got to be close to uh, I don't know, but 150, 2,000 people right there. Those uh, in that event, so it's very good for us. You know, when you go in an event and you can see the grandstand or full, good for the sponsor. You know, they put a lot of money there, but they can see that. Uh, People are coming to watch the race, so we race across Canada too. So we go to uh, Edmonton, Saskatoon, Montreal, uh, north of Ontario too. So it's uh, it's great. I'm very happy to race in that series. The sponsor right behind me too. So make me uh, makes uh, me have very happy and just to have a ride and be sponsored by Mopar Penzo. I can do my job and don't worry about that. So it's. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And you go to the Autodrome Chaudier coming up in just a couple of weeks on June 11th, the third time that the series will visit that racetrack. Can you or anybody put a stop to Jason Hathaway? He's won the first two there. <laughs> uh, can, can it be you that, that breaks his streak and gets to victory lane here in a couple uh, weeks? Yeah, he's on fire there. I don't know what the, what he drank there, but he, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a fun track. It's a little short track, and uh, he's always run really good there. I have a lot of top five, but it's uh, it's a track where you need to be patient, and it's, it's uh, 300 laps, so a lot of things can happen there. Uh, my goal definitely is to win the race, but we need to think about the championship. Win some point, and if we have a good car, yes, we 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 got to push hard, but if not, we need to save uh, the car to, to the end. So uh, my goal, yeah, is to win the race and try to uh, to beat Jason Hathaway. We have been waiting for months for your series to start. So <laughs> yeah. as, it's as, too long. You know? <laughs> <laughs> as people here in the States, we're like, okay, it's coming. It's only a month and a half away, and then two weeks later, yeah. oh, it's only about three or four weeks away. It's coming. It's coming. I've got yeah. to ask you, because you guys in your program in September – and because of the weather that you have up in North America, you don't crank up until May. Is yep. it agonizing to wait that long, or do you have enough that really fills your plate to keep yourself busy, fit, in shape, and getting ready for when May strikes again? But like you say, you know, our, our season starts late, but finish soon, too. You know, finish in September. Just the weather that two weeks ago, it's no here in Montreal, so... Uh, it's crazy a little bit, but uh, that's why it's late like that. But uh, it's it's a great series. I have my uh, my academy too, where people can uh, I teach people how to drive a NASCAR. I have 14 NASCAR car at home, so it's uh, I, I, I I'm working really hard. I have a personal trainer too, so I, I'm very busy during the summer. You know, it's a short period of time, so I try to to do a lot of things in the same time. So when the season is finished. I am very happy. <laughs> There's about 13 to 15 times a year I wish I had TSN. Mm -hmm. And it's every time that this series hits the racetrack because it is absolutely phenomenal to watch. It was phenomenal back when we went to Montreal years ago and just as amazing now every time we get to see him in person at Canadian Tire Motorsports Park when we go for the trucks. And I uh, uh, you know, wish we could go more. Andrew, congratulations again on the win and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Best of luck to you at Autodrome Chaudier here in just a couple of weeks. But thank you very much, guys. Thanks. Go from a 2.4-mile road course to a little quarter-mile <laughs> oval and to stack up 30 cars around the place. That is going to be fun to watch as well coming up on June 11th. Just a fun series. Yeah. Uh, top yeah. to bottom. And, and it's just, like you say, it's just got a good mix of, of road courses and ovals. And you say it, it, it's not just going from a road course to an oval. It goes to a bull ring. You know, it's just uh, it tests their challenge and challenges uh, their knowledge and, uh, and their talents. So, you know, it's a great schedule. I love their schedule. It's a good mix. And I think Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is the only repeat track that's yeah. on it. So, you know, it's a great series. And September will be here before we know it, unfortunately. 
and their season will already <laughs> be over. That would drive me nuts. Mm-hmm. Absolutely when you nuts. get started, you're done. I, abs- yeah. Similar I, I, to like Bowman Grace. Guy. Oh, my gosh. It's even worse. Yeah. Almost. Almost. Well, it is worse because they're not, they just did, they just started. Yeah. Bowman Grace got a few weeks under their belt, so, yeah, it's crazy. A couple of notables in the race uh, from this past weekend. Gary Clute, NASCAR next driver, finished 10th. And Kaz Gralla uh, getting some Give extra track time, uh, I'm, I'm assuming, for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race coming up there later this year. Just to kind of test the track out a little bit uh, as he's a road racer. He's done some IMSA stuff. Uh, finished 20th, so he's had... His issues, but he was at least able to see the course before he goes back there with his GMS team in September. And he'll be one of the drivers uh, battling Ronnie Bassett coming up Monday at Dominion Raceway, which is right around the corner. And it's going to be Ronnie Bassett Jr. who joins us here next on NASCAR Coast to Coast. NASCAR Coast to Coast will be right back on MRN.com. Restore lost fuel economy and eliminate rough idle with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, buy two bottles of Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner and get one free. Clean clogged injectors and increase fuel efficiency with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. For nearly 50 years, Houseby has been a single source provider of products and services around vocational and highway equipment to companies across America and around the world. We specialize in the ready mix, waste, forestry, and highway industries. Houseby offers new and used truck sales, auction services, transporting, concrete mixer manufacturing, and truck refurbishment. We provide solutions and integrity. For complete customer care, visit Houseby.com. Ready to take the training wheels off your race scanner? Go to FanVision.com and upgrade your experience with FanVision. Not only will you be able to hear the race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets a good run. Drafting help from Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. Jr. again pulls up alongside for the race lead. You'll see every moment through live video, instant replays, live stats, and more. Hi, I'm Jamie McMurray, driver of the number one McDonald's Chevrolet. And I never go to the track without my FanVision. So go to FanVision.com to rent or buy yours today. This is NASCAR k and Pro Series East driver Harrison Burton, and you're listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast on MRN.com. Now back to Kyle and Buddy. Harrison will be back on track this Monday afternoon at Dominion Raceway in Virginia. Brand new racetrack for the series. In fact, a brand new racetrack period going into, I believe, its third event. They were rained out this past weekend, as were uh, most of the tracks here in Virginia and in North Carolina. And Good chunk of the East Coast, actually. Yeah, and actually a very strong uh, entry list, about 28 drivers. Tyler Hughes, one of the late model mm-hmm. winners. Uh, our drivers that's done very well there uh, this year. He's going to be one of the Canon participants. Uh, Christian X, another driver that's, uh, I guess, under Junior Motorsports uh, banner, uh, running late model competition. He's going to be uh, driving a car this weekend as well, as well as the full contingent of a very competitive 2016 class. And will include Ronnie Bassett Jr. And, of course, that was obviously in question a couple of days ago. But, uh, Ronnie, Thanks for taking some time to join us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Obviously a, uh, a very trying week for you and, and your family, but I guess if there's an upside, you know, the racing community has come together, rallied around you guys, and uh, you'll be on the racetrack on Monday afternoon. Oh, thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on. Yes, yeah, for sure been a up and down the uh, last couple of days, if you, to say the least. You know, it was so ironic uh, earlier this week or last week leading into the All-Star Weekend, there's always people that come into town. And as I mentioned, uh, Kyle knows we're located right behind uh, Charlotte Motor Speedway, so we have some of our karting family that comes by and visits. Well, ironically, it was a couple of the guys that are tied to David Calabrese's car. And at that time, they were very excited because obviously they had had a rough run at the beginning of the year with a couple blown motors at uh, Mobile, and they had been on the sidelines, so they were kind of very excited to get themselves back in and uh i i've got to admit knowing david as i do through the days of karting uh this does not surprise me one bit knowing that obviously they've missed some races we're not in the points it's still a great gesture for a young driver when you think about somebody that's just coming into this sport moving over to this level to do what he did and, and i know you've just got to be tickled to death and i'm just so happy for everybody that everything worked out the way it has for you guys for sure i couldn't be more thankful for the opportunity that has come up has come up in the past couple of days. Um, you know, like you just said, he was planning on going to the racetrack himself this weekend and was um, willing and able to, to step out of his car and let me 
we'd be able to uh, contend for the, the points championship and get a race in this weekend. Let's go back uh, to Saturday night, Sunday. Uh, anything salvageable? I saw some of the video that you posted of uh, the inside. Uh, doesn't look like there there was much, if anything, but uh, was there anything that you guys were able to salvage from, from the shop? Well, um, as of right now, we really haven't been able to uh, move stuff around um, or move any cars out of the shop, so it's kind of hard to say, but you know, after looking over some stuff, it all looks pretty bad. Um, a lot of burn, a lot of burnt stuff up, and uh, I mean, it's hard to say. You know, the cars are sitting on on jack stands, about race ready with the motors and stuff in them, and with the kind of heat that the shop's seen during the fires, you know, we don't know if the chassis is damp by sitting on jack stands or anything like that. So, until we can actually get in and move cars around and you know get them off jack stands, we you know, won't be able to tell about the cars. But pretty much all of our tools and stuff have been you know, either burn up or now really in bad condition from the, the heat and the water. And I know you've had just a, a tremendous attitude because in a situation like this, number one, and Kyle and I alluded to this at the top of the show, nobody was hurt. Nobody was in the garage at the time. Everybody's fine. That is priority number one. Uh, you can always replace, uh, you know, physical items. You can replace a car. You can replace a tool. Uh, you have memories that, you know, you can you can remember things. Uh, from that garage, but the the mentality uh, that you had uh, once you realized that dad was okay, you know, everybody else was okay, Mm -hmm. nobody was in there was was just phenomenal. But, you know, I go back a little bit before that. You guys have operated as independents, uh, you and your brother Dylan, uh, going up against, and Kyle and I have talked about this, the multi-car operations, the Rev Racings, the H. Scott Motorsports, so many power teams uh, that have a lot of teammates, multiple teammates, to use notes off of. What's been the driving element to to keep you and Dylan going these last two or three years in this K&M program? You're exactly right. I mean, you know, when I I got I was at home when I got the phone call about the shop being on fire, and and uh, my mom called me. She's like, you know, hurry up and get home. The shop, something exploded in the shop. Well, I hurry up and get home. And you know, the first thing is like, is anybody in there? It's like, no, nah, your dad had just left about 45 minutes ago and came to the house from working on the truck. And I was like, well, that's that's the main thing. You know, nobody was hurt like you said. Uh, my dad had been in the shop about 45 minutes prior to to whatever happened, and luckily he wasn't in there. You know, you know, we we sit back now, we say, well, if he could have been in there, maybe he could have put it out. But we 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 don't know now um, what caused the explosion to be. Say he was inside cleaning the truck and it exploded, it, it could have killed him instantly. That's the like you said, that's the main thing. No one was hurt, and um, you know, it's you know, it's been a family, like you said, a family operation since we started racing and. You know, it's been in our blood. My dad did it himself, and, you know, when I turned eight years old, he, he let me do it, and it's something that I enjoy doing. We do it as a family, and that's, like, the main thing. You know, my dad knew where I was at every Saturday, and I was at the racetrack, and, like I said, we were the family, and it kept us all together even closer. Buddy mentioned a moment ago that uh, you'll be driving a car for David Calabrese this weekend. Got to be uh, happy for your brother as well. Uh, Dylan getting a ride with the Godovic Bunch and, and Precision Performance for this weekend's race, uh, that has to be pretty special for you guys as well. For sure, you know it's it's very, very humbling to know that we have two race teams that you know actually multiple race teams that were willing to help in any way that they're um, they were able to. Um, you know, like I said, David stepped out of his seat, and um, the Godovics luckily had another car at their shop that was able to be put together and to uh, get to the racetrack this coming weekend. So you know, like I said, it's very neat to have. You know, racing is one big family, and when something tragic like like that happens, we, you know, you got multiple people that are willing to uh, make things happen. And as always, and you mentioned the key word family, the NASCAR family always looks out for its own, you know, whether it's uh, the, the, the series, whether it's other drivers, whether it's crew member sponsors, it comes from so many different places. What has been the reaction and the support that you've received just back at home in Winston-Salem from everybody around you? Um, it's, it's, it's been tremendous. Um, you know, I've had several phone calls, text messages, Facebook messages, social media, everything. You know, people have called and said, whatever it takes, you know, we're going to help you come and, and get uh, restarted, I guess you should say, and do, like I said, do whatever it takes. And that's that's the, the cool part, you know. Like when something like that happens, you, you have – it's not just your, your family that's got to to, re, to reboot. Everybody's going to be there to help and um, pitch in and be able to make it happen for us. How hard has it been, and, and do you think will it be, to kind of refocus? Uh, now you've got to think about getting back in the car here in a couple of days, go to Dominion Raceway, an unfamiliar car at that. 
Yeah, it's it's going to be different. Um, there are two different chassis. Um, you know, luckily we got the uh, same crew chief that had been working before in the uh, first couple races this year, so it shouldn't be too different. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Um, we got a great team behind us. Um, they've they've done a, a lot of work to the car to to get it ready, and um, hopefully going to contend for win and keep the championship battle in mind. Well, there's a silver lining for Dominion. At least it's a fresh sheet of paper for everybody. I mean, it might be a track that reminds certain drivers of other facilities they've run at, uh, four tenths mile track, 12 degrees of banking in the turns, seven degrees of banking on the straightaways. And that's good. That's a good seven. I walked the, the straightaway uh, several weeks ago, and seven degrees is more than you think. It's, it's a lot of banking. It's pretty cool. But is that track, I mean, from what you've seen and what you've heard, Ronnie, does that track remind you of any other facility that you have been at uh, to, to get good notes and, and go off of in, in preparation? It's very cool, you know. Like you just mentioned, everybody's going to be on the same playing field. Um, it's a new racetrack. Everybody's got stuff to learn and and set up to try. So, um, you know, I've I've looked at video footage of the race and all that, or races that in the past that have already been there. And you know, to me, it kind of reminds me of Kenley. Hopefully, hopefully, it, it drives like Kenley. And if that's if that's it, we'll be in good shape. Going to Dominion Raceway this weekend. Then it's off to the Stafford Motor Speedway on a couple of weeks for the first time in a number of years, the NASCAR Kane and Pro Series East. Uh, your third in points coming into this event. Uh, how how would you have rated your season uh, coming into to this event thus far before Saturday night? Um, we've had a, a really good start to the season. I, I'd say um, we've been fortunate to get a couple of top five finishes and be able to contend for wins and not tear up race cars so we can make them faster week in and week out. And that's that's been our main goal since the wintertime was to, you know, finish races, finish the top five, and the wins will come. Um, we've had, like I said, we built um, fast race cars over the winter, and um, we'll just keep continue um, making fast race cars and hopefully be there. And very impressive on ovals, which we knew that was your M.O., but you had a pretty good run at VIR uh, just a few weeks back, fourth place finish on the road course, which I wouldn't think for you that I know you're a good short track racer, but uh, you got a little bit of road course blood in you as well. That was a good run. <laughs> I don't know about all that. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we weren't the fastest in practice. We were like four or five from last and, uh, you know, qualified 18th out of 20, 23 cars. And, you know, we knew we had a good race car, but, I, I mean, like you said, I'm not a road racer. I, I was still learning the racetrack during the race. Um, I just stayed on the racetrack. You know, me and Cruz, Cruz Cook talked, you know, weeks prior to the race, and our goal was to stay on the racetrack and run every lap, not miss the shifts and not tear a transmission out of it. And, we did what we talked about, and uh, we went and shoot for a top ten and came out fifth. So I'm really not going to complain about that. Those are the two biggest things. Keep the transmission under you and keep all four <laughs> wheels on the asphalt and not the dirt, and you did that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Glad everybody's okay, Ronnie, uh, and, and I'm glad to see the community come together and support you guys in the way they have in, in just the three short days since the fire. And best of luck to you in, in not you know obviously the rebuild and everything that you guys are going to go through here the next couple of months but also on the racetrack kind of get your mind away from that and and back in the the race car on monday afternoon well i appreciate it you know like I, said, I can't thank uh the calgary family enough for allowing me to, to hop in their race car this weekend and go turn some laps hopefully we can uh, make the best out of it and uh hopefully see you in victory lane all right look forward to it ronnie bassett jr joining us here on nascar coast to coast you know we say every every week just about you know fire is the biggest thing that drivers fear in the race car but mm -hmm. it can do just as much damage if not more uh away from the racetrack and uh, we saw that here this past weekend but thankfully everybody's okay the rebuilding process will begin, and glad to see that other people have come to help them. Well, and you, when you talk about David Calabrese, he said that was a no-brainer. He said, it goes back to my upbringing. That's, that's the way I was brought up by my parents. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm just hoping that if that, something of that nature ever happened where I would need somebody to help me out, I would only hope that somebody would be able to reciprocate. And that's what it's all about. And I'm just – I'm really tickled. I'm, I'm glad they were able to do it. They were so – looking to get back on the racetrack because they finally got things back together after a rough go at Mobile. And what, it was a no-brainer for them. Ronnie's third in points, yep. put him in the car. No-brainer. Go. And uh, Rick Godovic also coming yep. to the aid of the, the, the family, pu putting Dylan Bassett in a second car for that team this weekend, uh, the Precision Performance Racing Team. We're going to come back in a moment, wrap things up, and uh, kind of catch you up to date on what happened this past weekend at short tracks across the country. Coming back with more of NASCAR Coast to Coast, it's Kyle Rickey and Buddy Long right after this. 
Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job, our dependable high quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice. Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Restore lost fuel economy and eliminate rough idle with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, buy two bottles of Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner and get one free. Clean clogged injectors and increase fuel efficiency with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. Hi, I'm Marty Huff. Join me and 10-time NHRA national event winner Doug Herbert for one hour of horsepower Thursdays at noon on the straight line. We'll talk to the biggest names in NHRA drag racing and keep you up to date with news from the pits, tracks, and shops across the country. Join us Thursdays at noon for the straight line, streaming live on the MRN app, the Motor Racing Network's YouTube channel, and on MRN.com. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast on MRN.com. Here's Kyle and Buddy. There was plenty of other short track racing around the country that we want to tell you about uh, that did not get rained out. Tucson Speedway, uh, they were in action over in Arizona. Brian O'Brien won the Pro Stock feature. Keith Lopez oh, really? won, the mo- <laughs> the, won the Modified feature. Their next event, the for whatever reason, the Icebreaker 108, you know which why? will be held on June 4th. Remember last year, the, whatever the temperature is, that's yeah, the laps that's right. they run. But they have it predetermined at 108. Unless it goes down. I don't know. But it's going to be a triple degrees. digits. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be triple digits out there. Uh, another track uh, that has their season winding down. We were talking about that with the uh, Pinty Series. The Bull Ring. They've only got five races left to yeah. go. But, of course, they're in Vegas, so it's getting ready to get really hot. Scott Gaffarini taking the uh, late model race mm-hmm. over the weekend. I think their next event comes up on June the 4th which is one of many Military Appreciation Weekends, most of those this weekend, obviously. They run that next event, then they take off. What most of July and yeah. August, maybe come back in September and October for yeah. a couple of shows to wrap it up, and that's it. But uh, yeah, uh, it gets really hot out there, and uh, don't want to race in those conditions. <laughs> Kern County Raceway Park, they were in action over the weekend, highlighted by the Southwest Tour, which was won by Derek Thorne. Their NASCAR division's back in action this uh, actually in two weeks on June 4th. Spencer Speedway, Williamson, New York, they had their season opener for the Modifieds with Daryl Lewis Jr. coming away with the victory. Meet and greet the drivers coming mm-hmm. up this Friday night. Love those nights. Yeah, Colorado National Speedway in uh, Dakota, Colorado. Bruce Yaki picked up his second straight win in the late models, holding off Derek Smith at the line. Jeff Walburn won in the trucks. Their next event this Saturday night. Another opener this weekend, uh, kind of split. Devil's Bowl Speedway, we mentioned earlier this year, both the asphalt and dirt track uh, would be under the NASCAR sanction. The dirt track got rained out on uh, Saturday night. 50th season opener for both. It was Vince Quenville Jr., Coming away with a modified victory on asphalt. Rowan Pennick went two in a row this past weekend at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Obviously, there was a rain out there in between. He won the SK Modified main event. Michael Bennett picked up the late model feature. They're back in action this Friday night. And I'd be remiss if I did not use my namesake, John Long. Came away I with a victory that. at Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Beat Doug True and Mark Shook in the Outlaw Late Models. Uh, Dave Zagalski. Zagalski. Took the Outlaw League models of Berlin. I'll let you have that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Day, uh, Dylan Izzo picked up his very first SK Modified win. Dramatic style. Holding off Ted Christopher this past Saturday night at the Waterford Speed Bowl in Connecticut. Monty Gibbs picked up the late model. Uh, uh, check that the limited sportsman win. Late models return this Saturday night. And did you see the Christmas present was under the tree as far as the Wheel and All-American Series standings? I did not see they that. They came out. There they are. And I was shocked because I really wasn't looking for them. But it's like, oh, my God, there they are. Matt Bowling who has had quite a bit of success earlier this season at South Boston Speedway, is currently the leader. Any names on there in the top five or six? A surprise, but it's early, too. Keith Rocco is further down, but you know he's going to be climbing up the board. Uh, several other drivers will as well. Well, I think the biggest surprise is we don't have any of the modified drivers up there. The Ryan mm-hmm. Priests, the Keith Roccos, Chase Purdy right now in second, Trevor Huddleston in third, Ty Majeski fourth, Trey Gibson fifth. In fact, there's not even a modified guy in the top 
15. That really burns your butt, doesn't it? A little bit. It? Hey, guess what? Division two, three, and four are all drivers from Salina High Banks. Keith Campbell, Kyle Davis, and Kevin Lacey. Division five, Tommy Davis Jr. They've been getting great car counts. Want to thank Chris Eggleston for joining us, along with Andrew Ranger, Ronnie Bassett Jr., for Robbie Mays, and Craig Moore. He's Buddy Long. I'm Kyle Ricky. We'll be back here next Wednesday here on NASCAR Coast to Coast on the Motor Racing Network. This has been NASCAR Coast to Coast with MRN short track experts Kyle Ricky and Buddy Long. Tune in next Wednesday at noon at MRN.com for more talk from NASCAR home tracks and touring series. NASCAR Coast to Coast is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center or download from iTunes or Stitcher. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.